Hey friends, welcome back. What you'll hear today is a purely fictional short story. It does contain some violent content, so you've been warned. I hope you like it. The soft light of morning filtered through the curtain gap, stirring awake Richard Baker. A fragment of a dream, a shadowy sequence of feelings and images clung to the recesses of his mind. But as he tried to remember, it slipped away, like water through clasped fingers. He reached over to the empty side of the bed, expecting nothing and finding exactly that. An old habit. Lazily, he began to think about Melanie, the woman from accounting, with hair the color of a raven's wing and a laugh that felt like a summer breeze. Should I ask her out? Richard mused. She probably doesn't even know I exist. Still, the idea of it tickled him. It was a sweet thought to start his day. Slipping on his work attire, Richard distractedly combed his hair thoughts dancing between Melanie and the ache left by his mother's recent passing, a void he hadn't yet learned to fill. Shaking his head, he tried to shake off the melancholy. One thing at a time, he whispered to himself. Exiting his quaint townhouse, Richard was immediately greeted by a screech. Two cars zoomed past, barely avoiding a collision. Both drivers' faces twisted in fury laid on their horns. For a split second, Richard thought he recognized one of the drivers, but the face was gone before he could place it. Such vehemence was unusual for Hammond Creek. He wondered what could have occurred to so enrage these individuals. With the disturbing sight of the driver's enraged sneer still fresh in his mind, Richard began his walk to work. Mr. Collins, a neighbor Richard had known for years, approached. He'd always been a friendly face, someone to share a quick chat with. But today Collins's eyes were dark. As they drew level, Collins spat, the saliva landing ominously close to Richard's shoe. No words, no greeting, just that unsettling gesture. Richard quickened his pace, heart pounding. What the hell was that? He tried to shrug it off as a bad morning for Collins, but something nagged at him. The walk to work was no less disturbing. He saw a mother scream at her crying child, people pushing and shoving without reason. A group of teenagers laughed maniacally, throwing rocks at a stray cat. There was an atmosphere of simmering violence, an undercurrent of madness. Am I losing my mind? He arrived at his office building, a tall glass structure. The familiarity of its entrance was comforting. But as he entered, it became clear something was off. The receptionist, Mrs. Henderson, who usually greeted him with a warm smile, looked up with bloodshot eyes and growled. What do you want? She snapped, not waiting for an answer before burying her face in a magazine. Confused, Richard made his way to his floor. Only a few colleagues were present, scattered across the open space. Some whispered furiously, others typed away with a ferocity Richard hadn't seen before. And then, Melanie, sitting at her desk, engrossed in some report. Richard approached, a pang of hope in his heart. Hey, Melanie, he began, trying to sound casual. Melanie didn't look up. What now? She snapped. Richard hesitated. I, uh, wanted to see if you'd like to grab coffee later. For a moment, Melanie stopped writing. Then, with a sudden, eerie calmness, she said, Stay away from me, Baker. You and your sad, pathetic little life. She returned to her work. Tears welled up in Richard's eyes. Is this real? He thought each word a hammer blow, or am I trapped in a nightmare? Suddenly, loud shouts erupted from the other side of the room. Richard's eyes darted to the source. Paul, 
a usually mild-mannered colleague who often brought homemade cookies to the office, was shouting obscenities. His face contorted in rage. Oh my God, he's bleeding. Opposite him, Jenny, a gentle mother of two, retaliated with venomous words, eyes wild with fury. They circled each other, snarling, every word dripping with venom. Is she holding a knife? Horrified, Richard recognized the danger he was in. The office wasn't safe. Nowhere was. This is wrong. All wrong. His thoughts flitted between the horror around him and memories of his mother, her warmth and guidance. What would she advise me to do now? Without thinking, he dashed into the nearest restroom, locking himself in. The walls felt like they were closing in. Panting, he sank to the floor, hugging his knees. The sounds of the outside chaos faded into a distant hum, replaced by his frantic thoughts. What is happening? What happened to the others? Amidst the terror, a memory surfaced of his mother reading him a story about alternate realities, of worlds that were the same yet oh so different. Heart-pounding, he tried to remember how the protagonist had navigated that world, but the memory eluded him. All he knew was that he had to wait, to hope that this nightmare would end. But until then, the bathroom stall was his sanctuary, the only barrier between him and the madness beyond. Richard's heart raced as he heard the door creak open. Light footsteps echoed, the hollow sound betraying the presence of someone new. He quickly, albeit silently, clambered atop the toilet bowl, drawing his feet out of sight. Richard, a voice soft and almost musical, penetrated the quiet. Melanie. Richard, I'm... I'm so sorry. Richard's pulse quickened. The words felt off kilter like a song played out of tune. He remained silent, hoping against hope that she'd leave, but she didn't. The tenderness in Melanie's voice vanished, replaced by a sharp, biting tone. Come out, coward, or are you just going to hide in there like a pathetic rat? Her voice was unrecognizable. Laced with a vitriol he had never imagined she could harbor. Panic gripped him. What had happened to the world? You think I don't know about your little crush? You sulk around like a sick puppy, she spat. The words were sharp, cutting through the air with a venomous intensity. Your dead mother would be so ashamed, so ashamed. His breath caught. How could she know? He'd never spoken to Melanie about his mother. The wound was too fresh, the pain too raw. Melanie's voice grew darker, her words dropping like lead weights. Get out, Richard, you pathetic loser. He could see her shadow beneath the stall door, pacing back and forth like a trapped animal. The thought of facing her, facing this twisted version of her, made him nauseous. Desperation clawed at Richard. Stifling a gasp, he slowly lowered himself onto the cold tile, readying to crawl to the adjacent stall. His eyes darted from one side to the other, searching for an escape. He saw the furthest stall by the door. It was his best shot. One stall at a time, he thought desperately. Every little sound, the soft rustle of his shirt against the floor, the faintest creak of a tile, threatened to betray him. The space between the stalls seemed vast, like a gulf he needed to traverse. And with each movement, he felt like he was crawling through a minefield. His breaths came shallow and fast, fogging up in the cold air. He dared not look up, but the familiar sound of Melanie's heels echoing on the bathroom floor kept him painfully aware of her presence. With every inch he moved, he pictured those shoes Imagine them stopping outside his stall. Suddenly, her pacing ceased. Silence thickened in the restroom, and Richard felt time slow to a crawl. 
The stillness was shattered by the violent thud of Melanie's fists against the stall Doria had just vacated. Each bang was a thunderclap, jarring him to his core. Why are you hiding, Richard? Melanie's voice was filled with venom, each word dripping with contempt. You think a flimsy door will save you? Protect you? He could imagine her eyes, once warm and inviting, now cold and predatory, scanning the gaps beneath the stalls, hunting for him. Another bang, and he could feel the partition shake slightly. She's going to find me. Richard's thoughts raced, filled with fragments of memories, images of his mother, her soothing voice, the smell of her cooking, the lullabies she once sang. If she were here, would she tell him to fight or to run? Determination coursed through him. He had to escape. This wasn't his world. These weren't the people he knew. With one final push, he scrambled beneath the next stall, pressing himself against its far wall, praying he'd be overlooked. The banging continued, growing more frantic. Then, Melanie's voice, shrill and frustrated, cut through the air. You can't hide forever. He hoped, with every fiber of his being, that she was wrong. Then, with all the energy he could muster, he bolted from the stall, narrowly dodging Melanie's outstretched arm as she lunged for him. Bursting through the restroom door, the scene that met his eyes was even more chaotic. Desks were overturned. Colleagues he'd known for years were embroiled in vicious brawls. Papers flew through the air, illuminated by the harsh fluorescent lights above. And to his horror, he saw a familiar figure. Is this Dan? Face down beside shards of broken glass, a pool of crimson growing beneath him. This isn't real. This can't be real. As Richard neared the stairwell, a guttural scream echoed behind him. Turning, he caught a glimpse of Melanie, or the deranged version of her struggling against a woman he didn't recognize, a woman twice her size. The woman's hands were locked around Melanie's throat, her face twisted with unfathomable rage. The pursuit, it seemed, was over. Tears blurred his vision as he stumbled toward the stairs. Each step felt like an eternity, each breath a luxury. But he kept moving, fueled by adrenaline and the singular focus to get out to escape this twisted alternate reality. Richard thrust his weight against the staircase door, the echoing boom momentarily silencing the discordant cacophony beyond. With each pounding step down, his mind was a whirlwind of thoughts, reflections of the past, anxieties about the present. His mother's image, frail but unyielding in her final days, flickered in his mind. She fought with everything she had, he reminded himself. I must do the same. He recalled her soft voice, how she'd whisper stories of bravery and courage, of ordinary people thrust into the extraordinary. Yet juxtaposed against these memories was Melanie's voice, dripping with venom. Your dead mother would be so ashamed. Would she? Richard grappled with the weight of that accusation, the raw pain of Melanie using his deepest vulnerability against him. His mother had faced her suffering with grace and fortitude. Now, surrounded by chaos, would she think he was doing the same? Smoke met his nostrils as he descended further. One floor's door exhaled a thick, dark haze, a grim hint of the fiery inferno behind. The sight of it, coupled with his spiraling thoughts, increased his urgency. Fire climbs and memories burn. The ground floor came into view. Pausing to peer through the stairwell door's window, the main hall stretched before him like a grotesque theater of madness. Mrs. Henderson, the receptionist, had a young intern pinned against the wall, her fingers wrapped tight around his neck. On the far side, two colleagues from marketing wrestled fiercely over what looked like a shattered picture frame. And in the center, a group circled two men, cheering them on as they traded vicious blows. 
It was a scene straight from Dante's Inferno, a twisted reflection of the office dynamics he once knew. His chest tightened, a mix of fear and heartbreak. Is this what we're reduced to? He wondered. Aiming for the service door, he moved slowly, grazing the wall, barely noticing the patches of blood that smeared the pale wallpaper like abstract art. As the back door opened and the alley welcomed him, Richard paused. The silence was overwhelming, a stark contrast to the chaos within. Drawing a deep breath, he took a step forward. He thought of his mother's fight, her unyielding spirit in the face of adversity. If she could fight, so can I, he resolved. The echoes of the past and the daunting unknowns of the present merged as he moved forward into this twisted reflection of his world. Thank you for listening to the end. If you liked it, hit the like button and subscribe. That would be so nice. Thank you.